Hello and this is what we're going to be making today. Hungarian goulash served with asparagus and leeks and it's going to be super yummy. Right, let's get cooking. Right, today, and <laughs> sorry you're going to have to excuse my voice, I'm at the tail end of a flu so um, hopefully we get through this um, but today is Hungarian goulash so we're going to start off um, by getting our steak and browning it uh, and getting some caramelization going on the outside of the steak so let's do that first right I'm just um, toasting some uh, fennel seeds there um, and then we'll be, <laughs> we'll get around to browning the meat. Right, we're going to pop our meat in now and just um, brown it. And all we're looking to do here is just get some caramelisation on the outside of the meat and this is and not to seal in the juices as you might hear on some cooking channels or some recipes it doesn't seal in the juices at all um, it's mainly just to get some caramelization the only reason you'd brown the meat is to give some color to your dish um, and also a flavor from the meat itself the, the caramelization of the outside of the meat so you need a nice hot pan. I've got this up on the highest it can go. Um, but what you want is to do arrange your meat in one layer like this, and then turn the pieces over so that you do get it nicely browned. Right there you go. I've got it on full whack, and I've turned them over. Um, there's quite a bit of liquid coming out of that. Um, beef, it's got lots of things, um, and it's not fat, that's actually water, um, which is a bit of a worry isn't it? I wonder what um, supermarkets put in their beef. Right, we've moved the browned meat over to my cooking pot that I'm going to put in the oven, and now in the pot that I had the meat in, I'm just going to add this one onion that I've chopped up nicely and I'm going to add once that gets going I'll pop a bit of sugar in there too just a tablespoon should do it um, it's just to caramelize those onions and get some sweetness in there and then we'll pop back. If you find your onions are sticking a bit then just wave some olive oil at it. See we've got some nice colour on those onions now. And we want this to be a really dark brown just about ready to go in. <laughs> I'm almost tempted to get in there and start eating those. Anyway, we'll add those to the meat in a minute. In fact, let's, um, let's add them now. Right, let's just add that in there. I can continue cooking with that big roasting dish because eventually I'm going to be putting that in the oven. So that's now on the hot plate and we can start adding all our other ingredients. Firstly we've got a carrot to go in there. We don't need to do anything special to that. We've got some garlic to go in, so I'll just get my 
garlic press. We'll just give it a good squeeze. That's two cloves that I've put in there. We'll just um, give this a big stir around here. Let's get those fennel seeds. Now I've put them in my mortar here and given them a bit of a grind. And that's um, the paprika. And this is about a tablespoon and a half of paprika there. Now we'll stir that in and then we'll add the stock. Right here, yeah, let's add our stock now. And this is two oxo cubes in 500 mils of hot water. So that won't take too long to get going. We will probably season it again anyway once it's um, been in the oven for a while. So I'm just going to cut up mushrooms, put them in there and then we'll pop it in the oven. Right, let's get that into the oven now uh, with the lid on. We don't want to lose too much of that liquid. There we go, we're going to leave that in there for about an hour and a half. Rightio, at this point we're going to add some tomatoes, about a quarter of a cup of flour. So we'll stir that in first. Well, <laughs> now these are Italian tomatoes <coughs> and you notice how these have been really really finely chopped up um, they're a little bit more expensive this brand but I've used them for the last three years now and they've just been beautiful absolutely beautiful flavor is far superior than even the local um, canned tomatoes and we might just turn it down a bit too so we're at 160 I think we'll come down to 140 and I'll pop that back in right there we are there's our <coughs> leek all chopped up and ready to sweat off and then here's our asparagus and I will chop that up and put it in the other saucepan already. Right so I've got my asparagus and my leeks on now. Okay now what I'm going to do with the asparagus is I've just got it in a little bit of butter. Um, we'll cook that for about 10 minutes. The leeks I will cook for about 20 minutes and once they're nice and soft and sweated down I will pour through some cream. Right that's all nice and soft now, so I'm just going to pour the cream in there. And I'll just give this a stir. And I'll turn the stove off. What I will do is actually put some black pepper in there. Ooh, there's the asparagus that's all ready. Rightio, let's serve up. And there we have it, all served up. It looks delicious, doesn't it? I'm going to have to dive in. I'll just have a little bit of a taste of that. Let's get some asparagus and some leeks. And let's have a taste. Mmm. Well that is just absolutely amazing. You must try it. I'm going to get tucked into it before it gets cold. Thank you so much for coming and watching. And I hope this is actually a very good um, advertisement for the fresh ingredients. Um, because this is a beautiful, beautiful dish to taste. 
Right, I will catch you on the next recipe.